All right, so this is part two of what will be a four or five part series on identifying hickories. So uh, last Monday, we talked a little bit about how to identify hickory to genus, so like hickories in general. Do you guys remember any of the finer points of that? Zach? Yeah, uh, well, there, you did uh, four categorizations. Um, pecans is part of the hickory family. And yep. Then, uh, there was um, groups of five, seven, and nine, and seven, and that was the to distinguish. And then the yeah, and so what do we call that type of leaf? Yeah, so yeah, all hickories have compound leaves. No hickories have simple leaves. And anyone remember how to identify a compound leaf? Just leaflets. Leaflets, how do you know they're leaflets and not leaves? Oh, it doesn't have the where the bud is. Yeah, yeah so the it's, bud. it's where the bud is. So if you look at... The little yeah, I, I actually clipped this from... Uh, I'm not going to say it on film, actually. <laughs> 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 we'll say I made an angled cut at, at, a, at a bud, so I at least pruned it properly. So you can see in here, like what we call the leaf axle, there is a bud there. There is no bud axillary at any of the uh, junctions between the leaflets and the rachis, which is what we call on a compound leaf, that's what we call this central stalk. You don't really need to remember that, but. Um, <clears throat> All right, other potential identifiers for hickory. So the compound leaflets is a good one. In winter, you might look to the bark. There are two different bark types that we typically see with the hickories in this area. Does anyone remember what they might be? Shaggy. Yeah, so shaggy. And how do you differentiate the shagginess of a hickory from the shagginess of a white oak? It feels from the bottom up. Yeah, from the bottom up. And then what's the one other bark pattern that we might notice with a lot of the other hickories? Yeah, XY or braided is one of the other words. All right. <clears throat> And then what type of fruit do they produce? <laughs> <laughs> Using fruit in the botanical term. Nuts. What is the, uh, the product of pollination? Nuts. Yeah. Nuts. Someone said it. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> okay. Does anyone remember what family hickory belongs to? Which brings us to this joke. Juggling Daisy. And what family is that in normal person language? Say it again. Juggling Daisy. That, that's like the Latin taxonomic term for the family. So we're broad categorization, broad category here. Yeah. So, so walnut. And can anyone tell me why gardeners may not want a black walnut in their flower beds? All right, no, you were there, and we're, we're like half a step from getting this joke. <laughs> All right, so to bring it together, juglone daisy is the walnut family, which is what hickories belong to, and so they don't produce juglone in the same concentration as black walnut, but they do produce it, and allelopathy is just the, uh, the process by which juglone, a chemical exuded by the roots, and it's also present in the leaves and stems to a certain amount, uh, suppresses the growth of nearby plants. So less dramatic. And then of course, ICP fans are called juggalos. So that's the joke there. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> is that the, uh, Insane Clown Posse out of Detroit. Yeah, Insane Clown Posse fans are called juggalos. God, God bless them. Or juggalettes. <laughs> All right. So today, rather than hickories kind of writ large, we're going to focus on mockernut hickory, which is the most common hickory that you will encounter in, uh, in our area. And so I think I mentioned before, if someone asks you, hey, you're an arborist, what kind of hickory is this? If you just say mockernut without even checking, you'll be right more than half the time, typically, depending on like the type of habitat you're in. They do grow primarily in kind of upland, well-draining forests. However, they are found in every uh, geographic region of North Carolina, coastal plains, sand hills, uh, Piedmont, and the mountains. So, <clears throat> all right. So the Latin name for mockerna is Caria tomentosa. And when I first started learning hickories, when I got here, I found the common names actually to be kind of like hard to keep track of. You've got mockernut, pig nut, bitter nut, and then shagbark, which was easier to remember. And then you also have shell bark hickory. And the names didn't really like mean much to me, but I did find particular, particularly for mockernut, the Latin to be useful to know because I found it to be much more descriptive than the, uh, the, the common name. 
So tomentosa comes from the word tomentos, which in Botanese means pubescent or hairy. And I'm gonna pass around the, this clipping. Is this the one that smells? Yeah, and so I was also, that's gonna be another identifying characteristic. Shagbark also smells, they're lightly tomentos, but it's more of a fruity smell. This, to my nose, I think like cilantro and jalapeno with like a hint of sugar. So just what you're gonna wanna do is just rub the, I used to work as a wine bartender, uh, rub, the, rub the rachis or the petiole if it's this lower part. And then you can smell your fingers. And then also I want you to, on this larger piece, because one of the other characteristics of hickory is that it's never completely consistent on how much leaflets are on each leaf. But with mockernut, it's mostly seven, sometimes nine. And you'll see that in this cutting. So yeah, go ahead and pass those around. And then also notice that the undersides of the leaves are also lightly tomentose. That'll be another good identifying feature to separate it from the hickory that you're most likely to confuse it for, which is pignut, but we'll get to that later. Okay. So I already covered that, leaflets, mostly seven, sometimes nine, uh, and make sure that you're taking a sample of that, not just one single leaf. Uh, the nut husk is also a good way to differentiate it from pig nut and bitter nut, which again, we'll, we'll cover those later. Uh, it's, it's pretty thick. You see how thick that, that's it's like a quarter inch. Other hickories have a much smaller shell, and then shagbark hickory has a, has a thicker shell than this. But you should be able to distinguish between mockernut and shagbark just on the basis of bark. So you don't need to remember that. But quarter, quarter inch husk. And then within this would sit the nut, but it's, it's still got a shell. So you don't get the edible part once you get past the husk. There's still a thin, uh, a thin shell and then the nut. Yeah, so this dehisses naturally, which is again botany's for this will like naturally like open up as it. But the whole thing falls? The yeah, the whole thing falls. And we're gonna get into why that might be an important consideration when approaching hickories in a built environment after, after this slide. <clears throat> okay, so we covered the bark. Um, one potential way to remember the name, um, if, you, if you don't wanna memorize the Latin, is don't mock the hair. You know, some people will get made fun of if they're too hairy, but don't mock or nut the tomentos. Might be a stretch. <laughs> All right, more of a winter identification thing, um, but it can be helpful is mock nut also has a really, really large kind of fat terminal bud. Um, it's big, it's larger than the axillary buds and it is overlapping scales, also called imbricate, where on the right, um, is the bitter nut, which has valvate bud scales. In other words, they don't really overlap. All right, <clears throat> so kind of getting into some of the, why we might be interested in identifying mocker nut to species from an arborist perspective. So it's a really heavy nut, as you can tell. So placement would be an important consideration, like as we are looking at uh, hickories in the landscape. People might not want a mocker nut hickory right over where they park their car. I think someone told me, maybe it was Craig, that uh, he's heard reports where the nuts have actually like cracked a windshield. Okay. Yeah. So. Not as bad as walnuts, but still. Yeah, not, not as bad as walnuts. So as far as leaf litter, this is going to have one of the heavier nuts outside of shagbark hickory. So if someone has like a tin roof, like that might be a little bit uh, annoying while the, the trees are fruiting or dropping their fruit. Um, you know, if someone has like a really manicured yard, they might find it annoying. Um, in terms of general mess, they do produce catkins for flowers, which are as a rule, like wind pollinated and hickories produce a lot of pollen. So if someone is highly allergic to pollen, that might be a tree that they consider not planting. Um, and that is true for all of the uh, hickories and then walnuts as well. Uh, so according to the ISA manual trees and development, they have overall kind of like moderate tolerance to construction damage. It's gonna depend on some other site factors. Um, I tried to find more specific information on how well mocker nut compartmentalizes. The best I could find is that black walnut uh, compartmentalizes fairly well. But if anyone has any anecdotal experience in cutting into hickories, if they have a note to add to that. So we would think of black walnut as uh, being very resistant to heartwood decay. Yeah. 
but all the hickory is terribly um, resistant to internal decay when they're dead. I yeah. Know when they're alive. Okay. Sam, one of the things I wanted to mention is um, I've encouraged, tried to encourage some folks to keep the hickories, and because of their age and where, where the hickories are located next to their driveway, they've had slips and falls. Mm -hmm. And so we have removed some, some thriving hickory trees for the clients, just uh, personal health. Uh, yeah. It, as they're, they're older, 70s, 80s, 90s, and some of these communities around here, um, I think in Pittsburgh as well, there are some hickories in your driveways, and they're removing them because of the size of the nut. So. Yeah, so an important consideration, like if not all hickories produce the same size nut. So this is where identifying like mocker nut or shag bark to species may save a pig nut or a, um, or a bitter nut or even a red hickory, which all produce much smaller nuts with much lighter uh, husks. <clears throat> so, so this is uh, not just one client reporting wind chill damage. This is fairly common. Yeah. But some clients reporting, yeah, I've cracked two wind chills on this part. And even if wind chills aren't cracking, the little pop marks on the yeah, so for some perspective, the pig nut is still somewhat of a large nut. It just doesn't have quite the heft because the, um, the outer husk is really, really thin. And then otherwise, the nuts tend to be the size of like large acorns. Um, <clears throat> so from kind of like a Doug Talame, like what are our trees doing for the broader ecosystem? You know, uh, the urban environment disrupts or fragments the natural uh, like habitat opportunities for animals. So it, it is a, a very good thing to consider, you know, like what ecosystem services are being provided. Uh, hickories provide enormous benefit uh, to the larger flora and fauna or to the larger uh, fauna of the area. They, similar to oaks, they support a very high number of lepidopterans, uh, in particular moths. And then one of my favorite moths, just for the aesthetic kind of interest, um, it is a specific host of the luna moth, which is what is pictured uh, up there, really, really beautiful. You don't see it often, it's mainly more of a nocturnal flyer. Um, but, and by virtue of supporting a lot of moths, it's also supporting like the bird population providing food. And then it's a frequent cover for things like black snakes, uh, red-bellied woodpecker, uh, which also eat the nuts. There are a number of mammals that eat the nuts, including like squirrels, foxes, deer, uh, and then a few different birds. Um, <clears throat> And then no serious pests or disease issues, fairly drought tolerant and long lived up to 500 years old. So uh, very high quality tree in terms of its durability and potential longevity. Uh, it is more adapted to well draining soils. And so considering, you know, like if, if someone has a yard that's frequently flooding, that might be an area where if, if the hydrology has changed because of increased hard, hard surfaces, um, or a redirected stream, that might be something that mocker nut kind of struggles to cope with. Um, there are some, one disease of note that does not seem to be an issue in terms of eventual mortality is this sort of crown gall that produces these clubbed ends that's, that's pretty common. Uh, but as far as I'm aware and what I've heard Craig talk about, not necessarily considered something that is like threatening the life of the tree, more of an aesthetic issue. Or, or kind of like unknown yeah, pending, yeah. You see some, yeah. You see some full of mistletoe oftentimes, you see them. Yeah. And, uh, kind of out. Yeah. And then kind of one, one last point, they are considered climax species within North Carolina. They typically occupy forest types that are um, characterized as oak hickory. Uh, climax meaning that once an ecosystem has undergone a lot of waves of succession, um, as like soil is prepared and disturbances happen. And once they settle into a forest type that persists for many hundreds of years, that would be a climax ecosystem. Uh, hickories, hickories are a part of that. Um, yeah, any, any questions on how you might identify? Did you, did you get that scent rubbing off the, it's, it's pretty, pretty good aroma, yeah. Yeah, any, any other questions or any other comments from veteran climbers about what it's like working with Mocker nuts, if you have been paying attention to species or hickories in general, any notes? Fall color. Mm -hmm. It's an attractive. Okay. Yes. Yes. Very, very nice yeah. note. Yeah. Yeah. For our for our climbers compendium, any time point considerations, guys? Do you guys treat these like white oaks or or oak trees, or what are your thoughts? Yeah, they're healthy. I mean, they're nice and strong. Yeah. What are you saying? Yeah. 
Yeah. So you go fatter or skinnier, fatter? Yeah. Fatter? yeah. yeah. They're flexy. Okay. They're flexy. Uh, yeah. Thin. Okay. It can be hard to spike, especially yeah. if they're dead. Yeah. The, the wood's pretty, pretty hard. And sometimes um, you gotta take that hinge small to get it to go. Yeah, you see, when you see them fail, they break right at the butt usually. Yeah. Well, right up off the butt. They're like susceptible to butt, to butt decay and rot. Yeah, in particular. You don't see them upward like the oaks. You see them break off yeah, right, at yeah. the, right at the root place. It's I've cool. I've picked up from you know I've been in the area for just shy of a year now, um, and so I don't have like the anecdotal kind of breadth of data to really support this, but I've heard from arborists who have been here longer that Kretschmeria or brittle cinder fungus is a common is a common host. Yeah. And so as a as a consultant, anytime I see a hickory, I'm doing a really close examination of that that root flare, looking for Kretschmeria. Um, I don't. So in, in thinking about this thing that Ben and I put in, are putting together. Uh, if I have a sweet gum right next to a house and I want to lay a top into it, I wouldn't. But if there's a hickory right next to a house and I want to lay a top or another tree into it, like to hit, you know, to hit that tree or something like that, that's also a consideration. There, you're not going to tear out a lot of stuff from the hickory. You might not get it out. Yeah, yeah, you <laughs> might not get it out. <laughs> but uh, so what? Throw line, guy. Throw line yeah, hickory. Is any any thoughts there? Horrible. 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 Yeah. yeah. Well, Use your heaviest weight. Yeah. <laughs> Spiking them's horrible. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. All right, so what I'm hearing is we really lean into preservation of hickories to save ourselves. <laughs> I, wanted to, I wanted to pass out um, a pig nut leaf just as a point of comparis, com, uh, comparis, the comparison. If you'll notice, uh, five leaflets, very rarely seven, but this is going to be dominated by five. Take a look at the difference between the size of the rachis, you know, much smaller. And then this will give you a real good point of comparison for just how pubescent or fuzzy or hairy this is. So that'll be the last thing. Go ahead and pass that around. And then... The first one's a pig nut? The, yeah, so this one is a pig nut. And you can pass this around. And then again, where the Latin does come in handy, it is caria glabra. Glabrous means smooth. And so it's a really easy way, easier than pig nut and mocker nut in my mind, for having at least one trick for identifying between species while, while leaves are present. So that's what I got.